All right, so obviously, like I said, cradle is my, my favorite move, and so when, when you have a favorite move and something that's highly effective for you, I think the best course of action is to then try to use it as frequently as possible and fi find new opportunities. And so, you know, we showed you the cradle ride, foot steps up, we go forward and back. One of the other places I really recognize that I could cradle people from, and it's, it's not exactly cradle ride, but it's so similar, is either, a, and it's the same thing, a bad breakdown or a bad base build by them. Okay, so let's just go here. If your elbow and knees on the mat, so put your elbow and knee on the mat. Anytime his elbow and his knee are on the mat at the same time, I realize I can, I can cradle this. Okay, and so I'm looking for these two things to happen. So obviously, I can't cradle from here, right? I'm not close to that cradle line that we talked about in the basics. I gotta get way up and over, and that's how I cradle it. So where does this happen from? Again, it could be a bad breakdown, right? Maybe I try to chop him, boom, and I, you know, I didn't get him down. Right, they're, they're connected there. Lots of times for me, go in your belly. It was a bad base build. So you know, I'm here, trying to fight for the hands. Keep it right, right there. Okay, again, boom, and I dive to it. Okay, so, you know, again, um, obviously, cradle ride, top of my num number one top series. But once you get good at the cradle, it's like, okay, how, how else do I find opportunities to use this move that I'm really effective with? Bad breakdown, bad base build will give me the opportunity for that. Now, the finish is gonna be a little bit different and remember that rule I said on the suicide cradles, we never roll to the side. And this one, obviously his foot is not up there, okay? So that's not, that's not gonna be a point of um, pressure for me. So his foot's gone, so now I can actually roll to the side. So let's go head face this way so you guys can see exactly what this looks like. So I get him down on the elbow. Bad breakdown, bad base build, whatever it is. I'm going to slide over, get my cradle, and then I wanna lay my body down right next to him. And I'll, almost like a gut wrench, I'm gonna put him on top of my body to make it easier to roll through. So I'm gonna get right there, and now my body goes right next to him, my body into him. Boom. And now he's all the way top of me. Boom, and I come through. So sometimes, unfortunately, people confuse, they confuse this one um, with going over the head. Over the head, I want as, I, as much leverage as possible so my body's far from on this one, if I put my body far away from him, his arm's gonna come out and I'm gonna be stuck on my back. So you don't wanna make that mistake. This is, a, this is a different move than that one, okay? So one more time, let's watch this. Okay, I gotta keep my body tight to his hip and his knee right here. So as I go up over the top, boom, body slides next to him, load him up on my body, boom, take him through, there he comes down. Let's watch one more time as, as I go over the top there. It's, it's really key that I'm efficient with my movements. So I'm pulling him on top of my body so he's easy to move. If I try doing this all with my arms and just pulling with just my arms, it's gonna be really, really hard. Especially, and I see this when I'm teaching it, if we create separation between my body and his body. Because then it's really gonna be, especially if he gets his butt to the ground, it's gonna be almost impossible to pull over. So I slide here, boom, and he get, I get space and he gets his butt on the ground. Right now, now, right, I can't use my body because he's on top of me, so it's the only thing I can use my arms. <laughs> and I'm, I'm never gonna pull him through right there. So as he was back to his knees, I gotta get my body tight. And again, I'm loading him on my body. Boom, I'm loading him up. And that way my body is what's pulling, my, my arms are holding him to me, and my body is what's moving him through the hole, okay? So in that one, it's, it's vital that we don't, we don't create any space, we keep our body tight to his body, and then we I load him up on my body and it's easy to put him through. One of the things that might happen with your outside cradle, and hopefully it doesn't happen all that much because it means you, you are doing it right, you're doing it wrong. Uh, but hey, sometimes you do things wrong and you still need to figure out how to win there. So they slip the arm out. So it could be any any cradle, and it's again, it's when I'm going the wrong way, or maybe it's too loose, or I'm in the wrong position. So we get over to here, and this arm slides out. Boom. Okay. So obviously at this point, I can't. Right. There's no way I'm gonna roll through. Right. I can try as hard as I want, and if I keep trying, at some point, uh, the rest is not counting bad points, or possibly call me pin. Okay. So if I feel this arm come through the cradle, I have, what I have to do? I have to get back to my base. So I have to bridge really hard. Fight back to my base right there, okay? From this point, what I want to do, I want to get up on my toes, boom, cargo over, 
right there. And then right now, he's extra flat because I'm laying on the shoulder. Okay. So I actually used this my senior year. Um, I had a really crazy match with uh, Pittsburgh head coach Keith Gavin, and um, I ended up using this move to pin him. Um, you know, and it was really, I really had to fight. He had a good base, good flexibility, and I was able to really fight and get him through with this. But he got me in danger because I had the cradle and he slipped his arm out. So one more time on this. So yeah, so if he slides his arm out as I'm going through this cradle, boom, and I get stuck my back. Obviously, at this point, um, it's, you know, I don't want to panic and let go. That's the worst thing I can do. But I, I do need to really give a highly concerted effort to get back to my knees. I should be able to, you know, dig my feet in here, get a nice good bridge. He's not in a real good position where he can put a ton of power into me. So I should be able to win this position as long as I fight hard. So see those feet, boom, big bridge. Turn my hips over. And now from here, I'm up on my toes. I'm driving. Boom, I cut it over. Pull him through. And there's the pin. So again, hopefully that's not a move that you're gonna need a lot. Because if you're using it, it means you already messed something up and you kind of did the cradle wrong. But it is a very nice safety net to have. And it's something like I said I wish I would have learned my, earlier in my career because I did not a lot. I messed up the cradle a few times. Um, and then I was my senior in college when I got to this position against Keith Gavin, I was able to recover and then eventually get the pin out of it.